Now we're ready to put it all together and look at the complete picture of autonomic stimulation. So we're going to start with the parasympathetic. So remember with parasympathetic, you have the long preganglionic. Then you have a short postganglionic. And if we look at the effects of this, you're going to have cranial nerve 3. So this one is CN3. It goes to the eyes and it will constrict the pupils. Then we have cranial nerve 7, the facial. Notice it branches to two different places. It goes to the lacrimal gland, where it will stimulate the production of tears, and it goes to the sublingual and submandibular salivary glands. Then you have glossopharyngeal, number nine, It goes to the parotid salivary gland. And in both cases, you're going to stimulate more saliva production. Remember, this is the rest and digest, and having saliva is part of the digestive system. Then we have the vagus, number 10. This one does the most. This is the one you're going to hear about in a lot of future chapters. It goes to the heart and it decreases heart rate. So the vagus causes the heart to slow down. It goes to the respiratory system and it causes bronchoconstriction. So it's going to make your airways narrow so that you get less air in and out with each breath. The vagus nerve also goes to the digestive system and it stimulates increased and in digestive activities. So remember, rest and digest. You digest more while you're resting. And think about if you have a really lazy day where you're just laying around versus a busy, hectic day, you tend to get hungry more on the lazy day. When you're resting, you're working on digestive in your food. You run through it faster. If you're busy, you're not resting, you're not digesting. Your food tends to sit there, so you're not hungry later because you still haven't digested breakfast. Okay. Then we move on. The nerves from the sacral region are the pelvic splanchnic nerves. These nerves go to the rectum and to the bladder and they're going to stimulate you to need to use the bathroom. So just like you tend to get hungry more on a lazy day, you tend to use the bathroom more on a lazy day. They also go to the genitals and cause erection. And in men it would be erection of the penis and in women, erection of the clitoris. And remember that for neurotransmitters, it is all acetylcholine. Now we come over to sympathetic. Sympathetic, remember, has the short preganglionic. and the long postganglionic. And where these two synapse is going to be acetylcholine is cholinergic. If we look at some of the effects, notice you have a nerve that goes to the eye. This time it's going to dilate the pupil. So the opposite effect of what we had with the parasympathetic. 
You go to the heart, and it's going to do the opposite again. It's going to increase your heart rate. Sympathetic also increases the force of contraction. So think about when you have a fight or flight, your heart is pounding. So it makes your heart go faster and it makes it beat harder. And in the respiratory system, it's going to stimulate bronchodilation. So you're going to open your airways and you're going to let more air in and out with each breath. Notice that in these situations, you're having your synapse in the sympathetic trunk. This next set of nerves pass through the sympathetic trunk, but they don't synapse there. Instead, they synapse in a prevertebral ganglia. These nerves that synapse in a prevertebral ganglia are called splanchnic nerves. So this is where it gets confusing. Over here we have pelvic splanchnic nerves. Pelvic splanchnic nerves are parasympathetic nerves from the sacral region of the spine. So when you see pelvic splanchnic nerves, that's what it means. It's parasympathetic from the sacral region. And you can kind of remember and think of PSPS, -S, pelvic splanchnic parasympathetic sacral. Over here, we don't have the word pelvic. We just say splanchnic nerves. So when you just see the word splanchnic, no pelvic, it is sympathetic and it means that they synapse in a prevertebral ganglion. So we have the digestive system. We're going to decrease digestive activities. If you're in an emergency or you're really active, you can't divert your blood and your energy to digesting food. So you inhibit that. We also have the liver and the adipose. They store nutrients. You'll recall that the liver stores glycogen and the adipose stores your lipids they are going to release their stores. This will give you more glucose. Remember, glycogen breaks down to glucose and lipid in your blood because when you're active, you need ATP. So this way you have plenty of nutrients to make ATP with. The rectum and the bladder, depending on the situation, a couple of things can happen. If there's a sudden life-threatening emergency, people do tend to soil themselves. So you kind of jettison what's in there. You, you empty it, you get rid of that extra weight, so then you can deal with the emergency and not have that extra weight you're carrying around. So in a real emergency, they will empty. If it's just a busy, hectic day, then they tend to be inhibited. Think about like if you have a busy, hectic day at work and it's just go, go, go. You can go all day and not eat and not go to the bathroom because you're just so busy and hectic. And then with the genitals, we get ejaculation. All of these are going to be norepinephrine. So everything over here 
we're secreting norepinephrine onto the effector. Then we also have on this side sweat glands. So sympathetic is going to stimulate your sweat glands and it's going to make you sweat. You're going to make more sweat. And remember this one uses acetylcholine. Then we have blood vessels and depending on the situation, um, I'm sorry, depending on where the blood vessel is, is if it will dilate or constrict. So sympathetic, remember if you increase your sympathetic activity, the blood, most blood vessels will constrict. The only ones that dilate are the blood vessels in your skeletal muscle. So if you look at the net effect, you get overall more constriction than dilation. So there's more blood vessels everywhere else in your body than in just your skeletal muscles. This comes important in blood pressure. With blood pressure, constriction raises blood pressure. So the, since the overall effect of sympathetic is constriction, sympathetic raises blood pressure. Even though some of the vessels are dilating, more are constricting, so you have a net effect of constriction. All right, so there is your summary, kind of the big picture of the two divisions of autonomic. And remember, you tend to slide back and forth between them. You can be all the way at one end, you can be all the way at the other, or you can be somewhere in between. And if one is higher, the other is lower.